in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. And welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to day two, part two of the Purple Daily all-time Vikings draft. Yesterday, all three of us drafted the best offensive teams that we possibly could. Did you guys figure out a consensus from the feedback on Twitter? And I feel like a lot of people like Declan's approach of just loading up on offensive line. Uh, yeah, it, it seemed like I was the front runner there. I'm not just humbly bragging. I'm just relaying the facts. Uh, it seemed like most people liked Dex De- Sweets' team. And they were very yeah, surprised yeah. Dex Sweets kind of came out on top, I think, as, as well in that regard. That part I'm not surprised. Yeah, you drafted Randy Moss. In fact, we should go through... By the way, that's a train wreck happening. It's a train Judd's office coming right, right through my backyard here. I love the sound of the morning train. <laughs> Get off the tracks and the train's coming through, guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, here's a look at yesterday for the YouTube channel. We can read this for the uh, for the audio audience on Purple Daily. Randy Moss was the first overall pick on offense by Declan. Then Judd drafted Fran Tarkenton. And then Ole Macadac on the wraparound took Justin Jefferson, Chris Carter. That's pretty out. Judd took Adrian Peterson, and then Declan began loading up on offensive line. His next three picks were Randall McDaniel, Ron Yeri, Steve Hutchinson, and then Dante Culpepper. Judd, you went Tarkenton, Adrian Peterson, Stefan Diggs, Ahmad Rashad, Mick Tinglehoff, and then you started going offensive line into Grady Alderman, Ed White. I went the skill approach, the finesse approach. Jefferson, Chris Carter, Anthony Carter were my first three picks, then Chuck Foreman. Over to Bryant McKinney, Steve Jordan. McKinney. Eventually took 2009 Brett Favre as the quarterback. I, I like all three teams, so. Well, how could you not? I mean, it's the. I mean, I, so I, I, I don't see a favorite. I just see greatness mm. on all three teams. <laughs> That's you what see I the see. the three greatest football collections of all time. Put them up against Vikings any wise. franchises. Very the, good. It is amazing when you do this exercise, and we'll do the defense and special teams today, how many great players this franchise has. Especially in certain position groups. That's what I was going to yeah. say. It's I, yeah. I think what I think what uh, stuck out to me, especially as I did the defensive research last night, is what you just said. It's how many great players at certain positions. Yeah, and certain positions <laughs> they they're lacking. Yeah, for instance, and... for instance, cornerback. Well, there there's not a lot of fr- there's not a lot of great franchise depth at corner. No, and that will that will definitely stand out today when we. When we dive into this thing here, presented, by the way, by our friends at TCL, one of the world's best-selling consumer electronics brands. They have a new lineup of award-winning TVs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution at an affordable cost. Learn more at TCL.com. Inspire greatness with TCL, an official TV partner of the National Football League. And before we explain sort of the guidelines and the rules here for uh, for part two, let's shout out our friends also, Dex, at Manscaped. Old Macadac. Tell you what, I've got like three Manscaped products now. I don't even know if I need that many, but they're just great products. Oh, God, they're fantastic. Yeah, whether it's for upstairs or downstairs. And, uh, you know, my friends at Manscaped told me it's time to get ready and not sweaty by going to manscaped.com, okay? <laughs> it's July, right? We had, we like, I think, hit almost 100 heat index, at least here in the Twin Cities, a few times this uh, year already. So go to manscaped.com. You get any of these products, whether it's the beard trimmer, whether it's the lawnmower, and when you use promo code PURPLE, you'll get 20% off and free shipping. The link is right down there in the comments. You can go to manscaped.com, and when you go to check out, that promo code PURPLE gives you access to 20% off all the products plus free shipping. Go to manscaped.com. Use promo code PURPLE. If all I right, can, boys. If yeah. I can quickly give, give you you guys the, the old man thing on M- Manscaped, and I did <laughs> oh, this this morning, God. okay? There, there Why, is, do, we, uh, do, we need, do we need this? Do we need yeah, this right now? It's upstairs. And... It's upstairs. It's upstairs, okay? Um, but there's a lot of guys who are in their 50s and 60s who sort of let the ear hairs and nose oh, hairs Oh, yeah, it's important. Go. Yeah. And, and they don't, they're not really cognizant. I am. They're... But until now, until I got the, the uh, Manscaped products, I didn't have a good way. They're they're fantastic. You're you're, you're talking about the weed whacker from Mans- from our friends at Manscaped.com. Yes, but upstairs. Yep, but the I'm weed whacker. The ear hair. Yes, no, the it's, weed whacker is for your nose and ear hair. That's what I'm it. saying. The, the the weed whacker. It's, it's also a great accessory. Yeah. I love it's, it. It's fantastic. It's always when you're like talking to an old guy, you know. Oh, you, you see it. It's like you see like the you nose hairs yes. crawling out. 
You know, yeah. Just, uh, oh, I've been in this, I've been in this cave for 50 years. And now Sometimes they're not what crawling out, dude. I've seen them like, it's like, no, dude, just <laughs> take care of that. There's like a nose hair looking to shake hands with you. It's like, <laughs> dude, go to Manscaped. All anyway. right. Anyhow. Okay. Right. So if you want the offensive, the part one, definitely go. We did like a, what, 45 minute thing on uh, the offense yesterday. So today will be about filling out our teams on defense. So each member of the show will draft. 11 defensive players, and then also three special teamers. So a return man of some kind, a kicker, and a punter. And uh, you must fill out. So here's, I guess, here's the parameter. So it's a it's a 4-3 defense, which is historically what the Vikings have run outside yeah. of, like, a couple seasons. So it's a 4-3 defense, and you can either do the nickel version of it or you can do the base version of it. So it's up to you if you want to deploy a third linebacker or a third cornerback. You guys can fight it out uh, amongst yourselves and me too. So two edges, two interior defensive linemen, two cornerbacks, maybe three, two linebackers, maybe three, two safeties, and then a return man, a kicker, and a punter. Uh, so we're going to go to start with reverse order of yesterday's draft, which Declan started yesterday and then Judd and then me. So it's going to start with me, Judd, and then Declan. And then a few people correctly pointed out, and I, I, unless you guys strongly disagree with this, and it's actually going to favor Declan in the exercise, that after the first couple rounds, instead of doing, because there's only three of us, instead of doing a full snake draft all the way through where, where two of us are picking back-to-back -back every time, that we do the third round reversal like you see in fantasy drafts sometimes. So we'll go Phil Judd Declan, and then Declan gets the wrap around two picks in a row in the second round. So Declan, Judd, Phil, and then the third round, it'll just flip the the inverse order of where it was in the first. So then we'll just go Declan, Judd, Phil, Declan, Judd, Phil, all the way through. You guys good with this? I'm fine with I that. think so. I'm, I'm just going to look at the spreadsheet when it's my turn to pick. It's probably what's going to happen. But yes, okay. I'm fine with this. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Otherwise, it's like Judd's the only one not picking back no, yeah. to back, and it's just kind of... I've, I've never done the... Well, I've never actually done that in a fantasy draft, but it does make sense for like only these three people, because then, yes, you, yeah. the middle guy kind of gets screwed over. Okay. So uh, I guess uh, I'm on the clock here with the number one pick. Any other questions or thoughts before we dive in here? Yeah, oh. I, I have, have one. Are we doing the special teams guys as a separate entity after we do the defense, or are we expected to wrap them into the defense? It's totally up to you. You have okay. to draft 14 players today. Okay. I just if you, didn't know if if you want to draft be, yeah. you know, well, I mean, a kick returner or yeah. a punter with your first pick, you can do whatever you I want. I certainly don't, but I, I will... I didn't know if we were going to wait till we had drafted the 11 defensive players. That's fine. Yeah. Perfect. And also a clarification, too, that we are drafting the peak version of each Vikings player yep. as a Viking. Like some people yeah. were asking, well, do you get like the 2007 what? Randy Moss? No, you get that like the best, the best version of that player as a Viking. That's a, gr that's a great question by the fans. So otherwise you'd like get a player that was a cast off and then they became yeah. great somewhere else. So no, you're drafting the best version right. of that player's Viking. So number one overall. I don't want to overthink this. I'm just going to draft probably the greatest Vikings defensive player of all time to help fill out my defensive line. Alan Page as one of my interior defensive linemen. I don't know what else needs to be said. He is. Yeah. Is there two L's in Alan Page, by the way, Judd? Nope. No. One. Just one L. A-L-A-N. Mm -hmm. Can't even spell the name of the greatest defensive player. I would just put Page. Player, like... Yeah. P Page. 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 And also, is it Page with G? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm looking at it right now, so I know what it is. But, yes, that's what I would have done. Yeah, he's just, you know, it's to get, you get the longevity, you get the you get the the push up the middle. You know, imagine if Alan Page, and it's funny because he would play, like, closer to 200 pounds than 300 pounds, and sometimes that would be an issue coming to training camp with Bud Grant. But imagine an athlete of his stature in today's NFL with today's nutrition, today's weightlifting regimens. Like, he would just be... He might even mm -hmm. just be an edge rusher in today's NFL, but Alan Page, man, just a ferocious interior defensive presence. 1971 MVP, right? Yes, yes. Which is absolutely remarkable. All right, Judd, you are on the clock with the number two pick here. All right, I'm going to do uh, the same thing as Phil in, in that I'm not going to give this a ton of thought because I think it's pretty simple. I'm going to take a defensive end, though, and it's going to be Carl Eller. Wow. Mm-hmm. Purple people eaters represent. Yeah, I was. I would be shocked if these first three picks weren't these three guys in some type of order. I'm. I'm staying in the same vein with my first of two. Uh, Jim Marshall for me. Look at that. 
I'll take the edge, Jim Marshall. Mm -hmm. And then with my second pick, I will stay in the same defensive line-ish area, but I will take, actually, John Randall. Wow, dude. How about so I have that? Marshall on the oh, edge, and Randall. Randall. Randall played the tackle, according to pro football. He, I mean, he, 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 he was, was hybrid, largely he? an interior defensive yep. lineman, yes. Yeah. Nope, you're right. Yep. Okay. Okay, you're cool. Right. Yeah, you were probably a little... You probably remember the tail end of his career, Declan. Yeah, I remember the Was tail end, and I remember, obviously, the epic eye black. You know, like, every kid remembered that. Um, but yeah, I remember the tail end of his career. I remember his... He went to Seattle, too, right, to finish? Yes. Yeah, he's played, yes. like, three years in Seattle. Yeah, I remember that, too. You know what's funny about... So, the NFL, inexplicably, did not keep track of sack numbers until, like, 1982. And so you've got these guys like Eller and Marshall and Alan Page that officially historically have no sacks. But then Pro Football Reference went back and it actually says, so they, they tally sacks for everyone going back to like 1960. And it says on these pages, sacks are official since 1982, but they're based on play-by-play -play data, game film, and other research since 1960. <laughs> like that's other research. That's one of the most incredible, we, we've talked about this before, one of the most incredible factoids statistically about any sport is that they didn't begin to trace them in like 1970. Like right. when the merger took place, how do you not say, you know what now, we got to start to track sacks officially. <laughs> yeah. And then someone had to like come up with a name for it. You know, I get it. It's, you know, innovation uh, isn't just going to happen on its own. But if you if you include the pro football reference research, however they've done it, Carl Eller is the yep. Vikings all-time leading sack guy with 130 and a half. Jim Marshall 128, John Randall 114, and then Alan Page with 108 and a half. So we just I guess we just drafted to start this thing the four leading Vikings quarterback sackers in history. And now we're back to Judd. All right, I am going to well, let's see do I want Okay. I'm going to complete my deep defensive ends here by uh, jumping on the Hall of Famer Chris Dolman. That's a good one. Yep. Two stints with the Vikings, too, right? Yeah, the second one was not very long, and I think he wrapped up his career here. He was drafted as a linebacker. I, I won't because I think he played in a 3-4 defense at Pitt and drafted as a linebacker. And then I think the Vikings switched to a 4-3 and he got moved to end and was I mean, he was dominant. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I was actually going to take Chris Dolman here. You kind of kind of snipe me. It's a good pick by Judd. So now I'm kind of on the scramble here. Do I want to, you know, the defensive line train is already out of the gate here. I feel like I could either take the fifth defensive lineman off the board, and my God, there are some amazing ones left. Or, or, or I could pounce on a position of weakness historically for the Vikings and leave yeah, you guys scrambling a little bit. Yeah, I, I love this thought. So I am actually going to go with who I think is the best cornerback in the history of the Vikings. I'm going to go Antoine Win Winfield with my second round pick. Not because I think he's the second best defensive player, like on my right. team. I hear you. But once I mean, I'll let you guys will figure it out as we go along here, but there's it's not that many good cornerbacks. I've got a list of like 12 here and, and <laughs> 12, just, that's, just that's... as an example, my last one, and, and this shows exactly what you're saying, Phil, Duke my Shelley. last one, Captain Munnerlin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, this is – you're exactly right. This is definitely a position at which th this team – they had some good ones, but, yeah, it, not like the uh, defensive line. All right, so now we flip it, and so the rest of the way, it's going to be Declan Judd, me, Declan Judd, me. All right, so Declan, go ahead. All right, so I'm going to take uh, a cornerback here as well. And I know this guy's name. I don't know a lot about him. I think the old-timers on this show will appreciate this pick because he is the highest-rated – uh, player on the pro football reference page for the Vikings at cornerback, and that's Bobby Bryant. So I will take Bobby Bryant. Bobby Bryant had 50 interceptions for the Purple People Eater Vikings in the 1970s. Yep. Judd was the only one that had a chance to see him play, I would think, among the three of us. But Couple Pro Bowls, uh, an All-Pro in 1969. Yeah, I mean, played he had a Bowls, ton right? of picks. Yes, played, played in all the Super, Super Bowls. Yeah. And his whole career at the Vikings from 24 to 36. As a 36 year old, he mm. still picked off three yeah. passes. Mm. That's funny, man. The NFL was a little bit different back in those days, 70s yeah. and 80s. You had guys who were like 37 years old with a cigarette hanging out of their mouth, backpedaling. 
But uh, Bobby Bryant is one of the the great cornerbacks in franchise history. Okay, Judd, round three pick. All right. Well, with the run on cornerbacks having started, I feel that I am obligated to grab the third guy on my list because after that, it gets probably a little more dicey. So I will grab Xavier Rhodes. Yeah. Peak. Oh, this is peak yeah. Xavier Rhodes here. You're yeah. not getting like the washed up version. Yep. This is yeah, I mean, guy. was he? Is it fair to say he's one of the th- probably three or four best? Yep. I mean, you obviously have him on as the third here. Well, and Winfield, keep, keep in mind, you know, he also m- made his name by playing inside there, where he was fantastic in the nickel. I would say pound for pound, pound Rhodes is a better athletically gifted outside cornerback than than Tuan was. But Tuan is one of the smartest players I've seen play, and that made yeah. him special. Yeah. All right, now we're uh, we're back to me here. Third round pick. I just want to keep track here. So my first round pick was uh, we have Alan Page, yep, and then Winfield, and then we had Antoine Winfield. So I think I'm going to go back to the defensive line here. You guys have done such a good job, kind of beefing up your defensive lines. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Jared Allen as mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. first edge rusher off the board here. Peak Jared Allen was one of the two or three best pass rushers in the NFL. Absolutely. You know, the calf roping celebration, everything. So, <laughs> and he just kind of feels like a guy that also could have played in the seventies with the purple people eaters, right? Oh, it's kind yeah. of a, kind of a throwback country guy. Go out. No you, could, you could see him out there with the Carl Ellers and the Allen pages and, and such. So give yep. me peak Jared Allen. All right, Declan, you're first up in the fourth round here. All right, I'm going to take another cornerback here, just kind of to take care of at least these two positions. This also, this Viking is also a kind of a legendary player, but played in the 80s into the 90s, so at past Purple People Eaters, but pre-Denny Green, do a degree. Carl Lee. Take cornerback Carl Lee, who spent 11 years with the Vikings, three Pro Bowls, an All-Pro, even got Defensive Player of the Year votes in 1988 when he was an All-Pro cornerback. Uh, 31 interceptions in his Vikings career. Yeah, 11 seasons in Minnesota and then finished his career with the Saints. But I will take care of just, as you guys said, the weakest position, I think, on this uh, defensive side. So I have both my cornerbacks in Bobby Bryant and Carl Lee. Nice. Judd, what, uh, what do you remember about Carl Lee? Um, very good player. I don't rem- I, I mean, not a star. He. I, I don't think he was a guy who, who was like Rhodes, who for a year or two was probably w- one of the best cornerbacks. But the quarterback position back then was different too. Like you could grab guys more, hold guys. You could you could get away with a lot more. So I think it's hard to compare cornerbacks from yeah. era to era because the yeah. rules have changed. And I mean, when when like Rhodes was at, at his best or Antoine, those right. guys were doing some things that a guy like Carl Lee probably did, didn't have to be concerned about to try and get an advantage. So yeah. Carl Lee, good player though. That's a good pick. Like again, this this shows you. That the true lack of depth at quarterback for this franchise is interesting. So I think I just because I know there's people yelling at their screens like, "What? Yep. How can how can Declan pick Carl Lee over? I don't know. Like there's like Daniel Hunter or something or some of these names are out there. It's not that you're not saying Carl Lee is one of the you know ten best players in franchise history. You're saying. Get them all they're available, yes. cornerbacks. This yeah. Same reason why running backs go early in fantasy football drafts. There's only five or six that are really, really good. Yep. So, all right, Judd. All right, I am going to go back to the defensive line because the, the plethora of talent that resides here is, is mm-hmm. frightening, but it's going to be gone okay. fairly soon. Uh, I am going to take a guy who, in his prime, I think was one of the Vikings' best players. Um, but his prime was short-lived, and I believe he, I, I think I was at the game against the Buccaneers where he ripped up his knee at the Metrodome and then was replaced, if I'm not mistaken, by John Randall. I'm going to take Keith Millard defensive oh, tackle. Pete, Just, uh, Keith Millard was incredible. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, what, so so he played, God, he only played for the Vikings for like five years, right? Yeah, well, he tore, I mean, but, he... He tore up his knee, and I think that basically, I think he still tried to play, but like he was not the same player, if I remember. But he was in 1989. He was the Associated Press Defensive Player of the Year. 88, he he finished second in that voting. He actually was top five in MVP voting in both 1988 and 1989 Pro Bowl seasons. Again, this is an interior defensive lineman. He had 18 sacks from the inside in 1989. He was basically yes. Aaron Donald in 1989, yes. right? Is Throwing that, guys is that fair to say? Yes, he was yep. an unbelievably good player. 
Yeah, that's that's oh man, you're getting you're getting a <laughs> a peak. Like his his peak was Hall of Fame. I'm bringing it. hell on earth <laughs> when it comes to my pass rush. How? It's gonna, be, it's gonna be fun to compare honestly all of our front fours here by the end of this exercise. I think all of them are gonna be pretty damn good. Yeah. So right now, so Judd, you've got in terms of defensive linemen, you have you have Carl Eller and Chris Dolman on the edges, and then you've got Keith Millard up the middle. You need one more interior guy. Yep. Declan has Jim Marshall, John Randall, yep, as edge and then interior, and so far I have. Jared Alan Allen Page and, and Jared Page. Allen. Yeah, they're all. De- Dex is right. It's pretty damn impressive. And I'm about to add another one here. Whoa. About Whoa. to add. You know what? Whoa. You're going to wait? You're going to risk it? I'm going to go Daniil Hunter. Peak Daniil Hunter right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. What okay, was because... the decision, Phil? No, 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 no. I'm not going to throw it. He, he can't no, tell no. you. That's that's no. like saying, that's like saying well, who are yeah, you going to no. pick? I, I, I'm allowed to ask. He's, he's allowed not to answer. No, I mean, it's. I, I will just say I would be shocked if the other guy is still available when I'm picking in three picks from now. But okay. but I get, as I'm having trouble spelling Daniil here, um, might. I'm getting I with Daniil Hunter before the injury, a guy who was on pace, he had like 50 sacks earlier than anyone in NFL history, right? He was ferocious, still is very good. We'll find out what he looks like, hopefully, in the Brian Flores system. Peak is good, though. But give me peak Daniil Hunter, yes. All right, okay. uh, back to Declan here. All right, my next pick. I'm actually just, this might surprise you, but again, I'm just going with um, historically great players, and I'm actually just shocked we probably haven't made this. I will take Paul Krause. Okay. okay. I'll take Paul Krause. Is he the leading interceptor? Yes. Yep. In Vikings history? Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul Krause. Okay. Okay. Over to back, Judd. Back to me. Okay. Oh, I am going to break the seal on the linebacker position and and take the all-time, I think the guy that's considered the all-time greatest linebacker in uh, Vikings franchise history. That's Scotty Studwell. Stud. It's a great name, too, man. Scotty Studwell. And just Studwell. a football lifer, too. Oh, my God. Well. And you when look at scouting, him, too. It's a stud. Just, you know what the incredible thing was? So do, do you guys recall that that I think they still do it, but I'm not sure the playground build that the Vikings did for years yeah. in June. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Every year I went when I was covering the Vikings for the Star Tribune, Scott Studwell was relentless. He never stopped working. He was sweeping. He was digging like you'd see guys like on their shovel, right? Lean on their shovel a little bit or they'd yeah, be not Studwell. hobnobbing. And get... Scott Studwell, it was unbelievable. This guy never stopped. And at the time, he's probably 50-something. I yeah, mean, this dude is yeah. relentless. Yep. Uh, he, he's respect. one of the figureheads of the organization, I feel like, the last like 20 or 30 yep. years or so. Agreed. All right, we'll, uh, we'll keep cruising along here. Last pick in the fifth round. The guy that I was choosing between is still on the board. And so with that, I'm going to fill out my defensive line here. And I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of drafting guys from the same era. But uh, give me... Kevin Williams to fill out the fourth guy nice on my defensive line. Now I will say that I might need a run stuffer in here at some point, but he can he play yeah. a little bit of both though. I mean he played D yeah. tackle, he played DN. You can kind of move him all over the place, but yeah. uh, with Allen Page and Kevin Williams up the middle and Jared Allen and uh, peak uninjured Daniil Hunter, I now have a solidified defensive line here. Dud. All right back to Declan. All right, I will take a D-tackle as well as the run stuffer here. I was going to take Kevin Williams, but instead I'll take his partner. I'll take Big Pat. I mean, Big Pat Williams instead. Yeah, just one of the – it's kind of a down and dirty, oh, I like unheralded job, right? Just go mm-hmm. be Pat Williams and take up two blockers and let your Athletic. linebackers come in and run free. Tw- uh, twinkle Toes, man. That guy had – that twinkle that guy toes. was huge up front but had the spindly legs. <laughs> he did. I've never, kind of I've never heard Twinkle Toes. Twinkle Toes. He, he had, he actually could get after the quarterback. Oh yeah. For for a big man, he was surprisingly nimble. It was no, it's true. It, it, he was, uh, he was also a, a man of many entertaining words, and sometimes you could, you can only understand Hot about garbage. half of what he was saying. Sometimes he talked so fast, but Hot garbage. <laughs> he loved that term. Hot garbage. He's hot garbage. All right, over to me. I am going to... I'll, I'll take a second safety off the board since Declan took Paul Krause. 
I will take Joey Browner, who in his Ooh. prime was a force. Can you elaborate for people who have never seen Joey Browner? Um, Joey Browner was a safety back when back when safeties could dish out punishment. If you went over the middle against Joey, you were going to feel his wrath. And these are in the days when those weren't called 15-yard personal fouls. They were called jacked them up. Uh, Joey Browner was a really... Re he was a safety who was a playmaker. He was a safety who took the head of receivers off. Um, he is one of the best Vikings safeties of all time. Like, it's probably, you know, Krause is there. Joey Browner is there. I, I would say now it's very fair to say Harrison Smith is there. Yep. But, yeah, Joey Browner was uh, – he played the game with a force that would make Harrison Smith look like a uh, a very good citizen because of he can't hit like that. And speaking of, I will take Harrison Smith with my pick in the sixth round, adding to the secondary for all those reasons you just said. I mean, he's one of the great – secondary players in Vikings history. So with that, we are through the first six rounds here, gentlemen. How are we feeling? How are you guys feeling, feeling about your teams? Feeling, feeling good. Pretty good. Pretty feeling pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, okay. not bad. Not, All right. A little concerned about one spot, but that's it. Do you want to tell us what spot that is, or do you want to keep that close to the vest? I'm going to have to keep that close to to the vest because that spot is not filled on, on all bingo cards yet. Okay. Uh, you know, there is an open spot, many of them, for our listeners who want to lose weight. Livia is here to help you. Well, that's a thousand percent right. And guess what? When you lose that, that weight, you're going to go from looking like the guy on the left to looking like the guy on the right, which means you are going to feel and look fantastic. And all those clothes that might not fit now, guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, they are going to fit once you try this program. And right now, the best deal of the summer. Join today and get 50% off your personalized program. This offer just started. Join today again. 50% off uh, your personalized program. Lose up to 10 pounds or more in the first two weeks. Imagine that. First two weeks and you are down 10 pounds and you are well on your way to looking great and feeling great. Voted Minnesota's best weight loss program year after year. 855. Go L-I-V-E-A. Livia.com. dot -E com. if you want to look good, feel good, and get in great shape. Uh, we, we, uh, someone, uh, one of the, the Purple Day listeners bought an electric bike over the weekend from EcoFun and sent a note in. And there's probably been others of you, too. If you do go into EcoFun, tell them that you heard about uh, all of their amazing toys. Look at all these things, man. Souped up golf carts for the YouTubers anyways here. Some of these electric bikes. Tell them that we sent you in. By the way, on the electric bikes, 10% off retail prices, 50% off dealer freight charges. You can save over $700 on higher end Yamaha electric bikes right now and up to $500 on Scoot Star and Bintelli electric bikes this month. Electric bikes at EcoFun. Two stores in the metro area, Forest Lake off I-35 and Burnsville off 35W. EcoFunMotorsports.com. That's EcoFunMotorsports.com. And a quick shout out before we continue this part two of the all-time Vikings draft on Purple Daily to Summit Orthopedics. If you're, if you're like Macadac, uh -oh. And you are literally, you literally have a heating pack on your back right now because you're an idiot and you threw your back out two days ago. Hmm. Summit Orthopedics is here to help you. Knees, shoulders, backs, necks, elbows, whatever it is, no referrals needed. They offer same day appointments. If it's more of a serious situation and you're looking for urgent care, they do have urgent care open seven days a week from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. 25 locations across the Twin Cities in greater Minnesota. Learn more at summitortho.com. That's Summit Ortho. Dot com. Grinding through it here, boys. Grinding through it. I love this exercise. Ice, heat. So, okay, we are um, we're back to Declan here to start the seventh round. All right, if All right. Scott Studwell is the best linebacker, I think this yeah. guy might have the case to be the second best, if not the best, too. I'll take mm -hmm. Matt Blair. I'll take sure. Matt Blair here. A perennial pro, pro bowler uh seven straight i believe pro, or six straight pro bowls he made for the vikings from 77 to 82 he was an all pro uh just racked up a ton of statistics here he's one of the highest rated players on the ref pro football reference page for the vikings spent his entire career at the vikings from 74 to 85 so i will take matt blair with another linebacker spot I like it or my first yeah. linebacker spot excuse me he was kind of a nice little boost to the, for the second half of the Purple People Eaters defense, right? For that, so the second wind of the Bud Grant era. Okay, Jeb, what's your seventh round pick? 
All right, I'm going to fill out the cornerback spot because I've got a drop-off after this guy. Best known for the, the guy that was called for interference on Drew Pearson. We all still think that Drew Pearson pushed off. He had um, 31 of his 34 career picks as a Viking, including 13 in 19, seven, uh, over a two-year span. I am going to take Nate Wright. Okay. He's, my, he's the last guy that I feel comfortable taking. I feel like that's kind of where the list stops. <laughs> it's like, well, Winfield yeah. Rhodes, Carl Lee, Bobby Bryant, Nate Wright from the seventies. And then it's like Ed Schrockman Ooh. is my next guy. But I mean, I don't in know. Sixties. Yeah. I don't know, man. All due respect to Ed. I have Terrence Newman has a down. family. I'm sure I do too. He's, ne- I mean, I'll give you my cheat sheet. He's literally next on my list. Yeah. But I mean, that's how remarkable this team's been around since 61 and like, God I bless know, him. Man. But like his peak as a Viking was more as a locker room guy who played pretty well. I don't. He know. was he was a good player. He was yes. a good player. And if yes. you can kind of kind of hide him over there somewhere. So okay, um, let's see here. What are I guess linebacker? We kind of have a little run on linebackers going right now. So I'm gonna go. You know I think it's between two guys for me here. I'm gonna go Ed McDaniel, the Ooh, okay. the, the best '90s Vikings linebacker. Ed McDaniel is gonna is gonna join my team. Right. He was on some really good like those Vikings yep. defenses. We remember them getting real leaky in the late nineties, early two thousands, but in the mid nineties, those defenses were pretty darn good. And Ed McDaniel was a big part of that. And then in the nineties, guys like Ed McDaniel were not as marginalized as linebackers right now. They were they were key integral parts. So give me Absolutely. give me Eddie Mac. Eddie Mac. All right, Dex. All right, next one for me here. I'm going to go on the linebacker train as well. You might say this is a reach, but he still is pretty high on the pro football reference page for for uh, for the Vikings. I will actually take Chad Greenway. Yeah, I'm going to sure. take a player, too, that I've also... I, I've yeah. actually gone a lot of old school with these picks, so I want someone who I've seen play. Obviously, Chad Greenway I saw play almost every dang game. So I will take Chad Greenway as my other uh, linebacker spot with Matt Blair. Yeah, he's like Hall of Very Good. You Hall know? of Very Good, yeah. Hall of Very Good. Just a good, reliable linebacker all right judge all right i'm gonna close out my safety position because again i've got a bit of, of a drop and i'm gonna take robert griffith yeah his drops in the 98 nfc championship game just uh, you can have him man you can have him <laughs> he was a uh he's a good player but uh yeah. yeah yeah after that i've got like or, the late orlando thomas carl kasalki Corey chavis a little bit of a drop. There's a couple a couple names in there. We I do have Dwight Smith's name written down. Dwight for, Smith, dude. Just for old time's sake. Dwight Smith. Stairwell. Draft him in the stairwell. Stairwell Dwight. Dwight. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Eric Kendricks here. I thought about this, too. Sure. Eric Kendricks is one of the better linebackers in Vikings history. You give me give me peak Eric Kendricks, I get a guy that can, that can cover tight ends 20 yards down the field, a guy that can yeah. intercept passes, can, can pass rush. Double A gap blitz, right? So, Eric Kendricks, welcome to Team Macadac. I like it. All right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to reach here. Or not reach, but I'm going to start the other one for my kick returner. Oh, here we go. We're going to do the kick returners? (laughs) Yep. Give me me CP. Give me Cordero Patterson. (laughs) I love it. I love it, dude. I mean, he is one of the great kick returners in the history of the NFL, right? Yeah. I'd say, I mean, he's not he's not Devin Hester level. That's obviously like the best I think to ever to do it. But he's sure. pretty dang good, dude. And especially in the era where they're trying to get rid of this, I mean, he's still very good at what he does. So I'll, I'll take the kick returner. I'll start this run. We'll see if anyone else kicks things off on the special team side. But I'll take uh, Cordero Patterson. All right, Judd, are you ready to do special teams yet, or are you no. still working on defense? No, okay. I am still uh, trying to fill in my defense. I'm going to take another linebacker. I'm going to take Jeff Seaman. Oh, okay. Jeff Seaman was a how do you spell uh, that last name? Very good player. S I E M A N. And that's from uh, uh, what era? Is, is that 60s or 70s? 70s. 70s. I think in the early 80s, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. We'll yeah, because he was playing when I was a kid. Um. Oh, you know what? O N. I'm sorry. S I E M O N. Thought I got I just want to make sure we get this right for record keeping purposes. S I E M O N. So I'm, I'm now at two linebackers. Okay. So when you know when this gets framed in the Vikings Hall of Fame someday, I just don't want like the <laughs> you know the purple daily all time oh, Vikings draft. They can't wait to see it. 
make sure we're good there. Um, all right, I feel like, uh, I, I think, is it fair to say we're probably all going base defense here just with the lack of cornerbacks? I think, yep. I think I'm going to go with a third linebacker here. Yep. Um, it's kind of between a couple guys. You know what? Uh, let's EJ Henderson. Give Ooh. me peak, peak EJ Henderson. Just another a good, solid hall of very good before the injury linebacker. And by the way, like a linebacker on a couple of the best Vikings defenses we've seen, like run stopping, right? He was an incredible run stopping tackler. So I'll take EJ Henderson. It gives me a third linebacker. Dex? All right, I still have to fill out a DN spot, so I'll, fi- I'll finish this out. I will take Everson Griffin. Yeah. So my defensive line looks like Jim Marshall uh, and Everson Griffin on the ends, and then Big Pat and John Randall as your defensive tackles. Wow, dude. Can you imagine how hard it would be to stop that defensive mm. line? Man. Like, when EJ Henderson is your weak link. Or I'm sorry, uh, Everson Griffin. Everson, yeah. Just incredible, man. All right, Judley, what's your 10th round pick? All right, I'm going to fill out my linebackers. I'm going to take another throwback guy, Wally Hilgenberg. Oh, love it, man. What so uh, did, did you see him play? School. No, um, I do. I don't recall seeing him play much. He played. Let's see. I've got his uh, Wikipedia page up right in front of me. He played from '68 to '79, so I saw him play for about a year plus. Okay. Um, seven and a half career sacks, eight picks. Recovered 14 fumbles, yeah. scored a couple of touchdowns, uh, but yeah. So, so Studwell, Jeff Seaman, and Wally Hilgenberg are my linebackers. That is some oh, old man, dude, school is, stuff, there, gentlemen. That is all right. Even though I still have a couple defensive positions to to fill out here, I also am going to go into the special teams category, and I will take Percy Harvin is my return nice. man. Five right. kick return touchdowns as a Viking. And uh, he deserves a spot here. Uh, there's there's some interesting options, some good options for return men in this franchise's history. I'll take Percy. All right. I'm going to go with, yeah, third linebacker here. Roy Winston wasn't taken, right? Nope. Correct. He's Roy Winston, who, and Judd, I think he was Fourth there for the goals. first. He was there for all four. Okay. Yep. So he was hurt. Um, he got he started battling some injuries in seventy four through seventy six when he finished his career with the Vikings. But I mean, he was with the Vikings from sixty two all the way to seventy six. Yep. Uh, gra- uh, started all, a ton of games for them. So I will go old school with one more, and I will take Roy Winston. Jack right. Del Rio falls off the list. Didn't make it. No, he's yeah, he's sneaky high on like the all time Vikings tackles list. Yeah, and some which is hard stats. to, but he's a linebacker, so they make a lot of tackles. That's the yeah. thing is that's a. That's a somewhat misleading stat, I think, at times. Yeah. All right, over to me. Yeah, I am going to. <laughs> I, I am going to go special teams as well, but I'm not. But I've got my kick returner now picked out, but I'm not going to take him yet because there's no need with both of you guys having filled yeah, up that now. that position. I can be patient. I am going to take a kicker. I'm going to take our friend Ryan Longwell. Oh. Oh. I guess we'll I never can't know take how Gary. clutch he is because he never got to kick the clutch. Yeah, and kick. Gary Anderson actually makes sense as a pick, but I can't bring myself to do that to this poor fan base. <laughs> I kind of feel you on that. Do I want to go? I should probably go back to defense here. I'm going to. Oh, man. Oh, there's a guy. We're talking peak of their career. He's despicable, but I need a safety. You're taking Darren Sharper? Oh, I knew it. Can I do it? Oh, it's so disgusting. There's not that it's, much. You know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to okay. do it. Okay. Give You know what? You know what? Take I'm going to go Smith, off then. the board. No. Give me Vency Glenn. Oh, give wow. me give me peak Vency Glenn wow. from those those really good early 90s yes. Vikings defenses. I grew up on Vency Glenn. Vency Some of those Glenn. guys. Dwayne Washington, Vency Glenn. Played for guys. the Chargers. Yep. I, I once drank with him at a bar. What the heck? It was on 394. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. It was on 394. It was something cow. It, it was a huge hangout spot for people in their 20s at the time. That's awesome. I'm a little yeah. nervous about the back end of this defense here, but uh, you know, we'll figure it out. Well, poor so Harrison ju- Smith. It's a, it's a judge drinking buddy, though, so you can't go too Man, wrong. He was actually good, though. Like He did get a bunch of picks, as I recall, at least in a couple seasons. Yep, he's a good player. Good player. All right, back to Declan here. We're All right, I'll take my round. I'll take my kicker too. I'll take Fred Cox. 
Ooh. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, like, translating across eras, like, Fred Cox was, Fred Cox missed a lot of kicks because right. every kicker did back in the day. But he is, isn't he the top point scorer in yes. Vikings history? Yeah. Yes. So Because he was Fred here Cox. from, like, 61 to 78 or, so, or 77, maybe? All Old right. Freddie Cox. All right, back to Judd. All right, what am I going to do? You know what? I'm going to take a punter. I'm going to take Chris <laughs> Cluey. I'm taking Chris Cluey off the board, who is actually statistically very good. He is statistically very good. I just think Chris it's funny Cluey. that you broke the seal on punter before the... Well, I only have one defensive position left to, to fill, and y- you guys can't fill it, so yeah, that's I'm just going to wait until, until my last pick. That's fair. Well, I mean, yeah, I have one more position to fill technically. I have a safety to fill. So I will take my up. Wait, hold on. Let me pick first. Up. That's still my thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> you calm down there, old Dax tweets. <laughs> let, me, let me go first. Let me pick here. Do I want to go? You know, I'm going to go kicker too. I'm going to go kicker here. <laughs> well, but you guys already had your kicker. So I'll take well, a, I'll, I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to do a punter. Give me Mitch Berger. Mitch Berger is my punter. Oh, I love Mitch. Hiding the Snickers bar and the. Yeah. In the cleats, right? Mitch enjoyed a good time, according to stuff I was told, too. <laughs> All right, back to Declan here. 13th round pick. All right, I'll round out my safeties and my defense. This guy was really good for one year. I'll take Corey Chavis as my he other was. safety. He had a, I'll he take Corey Chavis. List, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take Corey Chavis. So I'll take Corey Chavis. That rounds out all my uh, defensive players. Whoa, whoa, whoa no. Whoa, whoa buddy. Whoa, whoa. There was a drink right there. Whoa, Mackie's drinking something oh this morning. Dude, I told you to lay <laughs> off the beverages. <laughs> oh. oh, it's my back. My back. My my, uh, my establishment that Venzi Glenn and I drank at Cattle Company. That's what it was. Cattle Company? It just came to me. Cattle Wait. Company. Wow. Once saw, was it I once just like saw, randomly ran into him, or what was the? He was randomly there, yeah. But it, it was a big, it was a big um, uh, uh, place to hang, hang out at, at the time. I once saw Bernsey's daughter, who I think was my age, in, in line there too. Like a line would form. It was that popular. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Thanks, all right. Man. So what do I need? I need a return man, and I need a defensive tackle, um, which you guys both have filled, so it's no problem for me. My uh, defensive tackle, I'm going to take. Hank Thomas, John Randall's oh. running partner. Henry Thomas, man. Yep, he's uh, the depth another of one this of those unheralded incredible. players. Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, he it's was nuts. really good, but but the depth of this, like every one of us has a great defensive line. Yeah, correct. And there's some guys on the board still. I mean, like Brian yeah. Robinson didn't get drafted, nor nor would he probably. In Gary the Larson, exercise. who was part of the Purple Jerry People Ball Eaters. Jerry, yeah. I thought about Ball. I mean, hell, Linval Joseph. Linval, Linval. yeah. Linval. I was about to say yeah. Linval, Linval is a D tackle. I thought about Ball just because I loved how big he was. Just just meat and potatoes. Just eating up room. I think Linval is, I, I was only in the Vikings locker room from like 2016 to 2020, but I am I can confidently say Linval Joseph was the m- biggest human being I've ever seen in, in a Vikings locker room. That yeah. guy was just humongous. Yes. He was big. I want to say Pat Williams was. Oh, I bet he was bigger, yeah. Was bigger. Yeah. All, All right, right, I, I need. To- are you Whoa. trying to skip me again? Whoa, no, what's going on here? You're like, on. are you just trying to skip me again? Is no, that what just happened? You're acing out Phil. What's going on? It's fine. <laughs> Declan's really it's itchy fine. to get a to get it's a punter here. There's infighting no. going on. All right, I need a cornerback still. I've just been dragging my feet on this, so I will indeed take the wily old veteran, Terrence Newman. Okay. Oh, nice. Terrence Newman. So I get some versatility with I got. I've got a couple wily guys. I got Peak Antoine Winfield and then the Vikings version of Terrence Newman. Probably gonna get burned on the outside by taller, fast receivers. Yeah. And then I got but I got Vincey Glenn and Harrison Smith to clean up the mess <laughs> in the back somewhere. And I've got uh, Duke Shelley on my bench. You guys don't know that, but Harrison Smith's Duke like Shelley. how did I get in this defensive backfield? <laughs> no. All right, now it's Declan's turn here. These are the, the, the last All right, Declan, go here. ahead. Hey, wait, wait. It's my pick, right? Uh, I love it. Greg right. Coleman. Greg Coleman. Greg Coleman. Greg Coleman. There he is. Greg Coleman. Free game preach. And you can, uh, with Greg Coleman, you also get to go and uh, and flag players during warm-ups before the game for uniform violations. So that's what Greg Coleman has done, right, for like 15 years. Isn't he yeah. one of the guys that goes around and like, he's like working for K-Fan, but then he's also like. Well, he was. He was like making no. Okay, maybe it was a long time ago he, then. 
he's retired now. He he retired like a couple of years ago. I think he left the broadcast and that, that job. Oh, he's I not on the say, broadcast anymore. No, and I want and and I, I want to say the job you're talking about of flagging uniform violations. I think it's another former player or a former. It might not be a former Viking. Oh, is, is, now, it's not Lieber. Is Lieber here. double double uh, duty no, too? I don't think Ben would give Those a socks. Look a little high. That. I don't know. Go <laughs> find me. Antoine, I think, got fined almost every game he played for that. Having his socks too high? Yeah, it was. Or his legs are too short. Maybe, maybe wow. that's what it was. All right, my last pick. Um, I'm going to take the guy, and this is another spot. I guess it's not super shocking, but when you look at the Vikings' history of kick returners, which is now uh, which is now something that's sort of gone by the wayside, but there's not a lot of like great names there. Cordero was fantastic. Percy was. So I'm going to take the third one. Not David Palmer. Oh, no. thought you were going David Palmer. I'm going to go with a guy that made the Pro Bowl off of this and then fell off the wagon, Corin Robinson. Oh, oh. oh, wow. Yeah, wow well, was right. I thought I was typing in Marcus like, Sherrill as I was, I was typing too. in uh, David Palmer. Corin Robinson. So he had Corin a really Robinson. good season. You get great. the peak version of Corin Robinson. Right? I, I get his yes, which was a Pro Bowl season. Yep. And now uh, old Macadac needs a kicker here. And Got the obvious be. choice is staring us in the face, right? The guy that made all of his regular season kicks. He made like 120 straight kicks between 1997 and 98. I think he's one of the all-time leading scorers in Vikings history. But screw Gary Anderson. He's not making my team after missing from 38 like, yards in 1998. NFC Championship game. Love it. Wad Revez will oh, be the yeah. kicker for this yeah. team. Wadravez. You don't want to take peak uh, Blair Walsh in his rookie season where he was an all pro? Oh, it's a great one. <laughs> That's Honestly, another one. No. But you know what? Screw him, too. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to. If you don't take Gary, you can't take Blair. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you, you blow, you can't take, blow playoff games. And... You should technically take Gary, but I don't blame right. you for not. And I couldn't do it either. Yeah. Which is why I took my guy Longwell, who didn't even get a chance. So, wow. Look at that exercise, you guys. Let's go, let's go through our teams here. Congratulations. <laughs> To you guys, to all of us for completing the first ever Purple Daily. I don't know if we're going to do this again. Like, we probably have to wait a few years for ever. more guys to come on the board here. But this has been a fun exercise. So uh, let's start with Declan. Can you go through your defense? Who do you got? All right. So my defensive line is Jim Marshall and Everson Griffin on the edges. And in the middle is John Randall and Pat Williams at defensive tackle. Oh. My linebacker group, my three linebackers are Matt Blair, Chad Greenway, and Roy Winston. My cornerback room is Bobby Bryant and Carl Lee. My safeties are Paul Krause and Corey Chavis. That's a pretty good team, man. I mean, all these teams are going to sound, they're all going to be kind of similar in that they're ferocious up front, pretty good in the linebacker area, and then yeah, very drop. questionable in the secondary, right? So I feel like the corners are questionable. There, there's some, there's some safety talent here. I mean, it's not a ton, but it's some pretty good talent. Mm -hmm. Peak Harrison Smith, really, really good. Yeah. Peak Joey Browner, despite the fact that he dropped a couple of uh, of um, intercept interception attempts in '98. Robert Griffith at his peak was good. Paul Krause was great. Corey Chavis was pretty damn good. Yep. Judge, yeah, can I you feel fly like through. What's, what is your team? Fly yeah, your yep, team. my front four: Carl Eller, Keith Millard, Henry Thomas, and Chris Dolman. My mm. linebackers, Scott Studwell, Jeff Seaman, Wally Hilgenberg, because I'm throwing it back. Uh, my secondary is Xavier Rhodes, Nate Wright, Joey Browner, Robert Griffith. And then my kicker is Longwell. My punter is Cluey. And my kick returner is Corin Robinson. Pretty good, man. Actually, that's secondary. It's probably the best secondary of all of ours. So, all right, my defensive line is the two edge dressers are Daniil Hunt, peak Daniil Hunter, peak Jared Allen, and then Allen Page and Kevin Williams. On the inside. Yep. My linebackers are Ed McDaniel, Eric Kendricks, and EJ Henderson. My cornerbacks are Antoine Winfield and Terrence Newman. And my safeties are Harrison Smith and Vency Glenn. Vency. With Percy Harvin returning kicks, Quad Revez and Mitch Berger to round out the special teams. Pretty good. Mm. Mm. What an exercise. Let us know in the YouTube comments section who has the best roster. And go back. You can compare the offensive rosters, too, to see who has the best overall 
team. We'd like to hear from you guys. Maybe we can read some of the comments on Feedback Friday here. Also, a shout out to our friends over at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. It's like having a great defensive front or a great offensive line there to protect your business. Federated, been around since 1904, based in Owatonna, Minnesota, but they help businesses all around the country. So whether you're based in Minnesota or elsewhere, especially if you're a next generation business leader, they're looking to work with you and they can elevate your business through risk management tools and resources. Federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. How are you guys feeling? Feeling good? Feeling good. I feel really good about I like that. My squad. Yeah, yep. I like my team. I feel really good. Maybe we can have like maybe there's other podcasts. Like can the can the Steelers podcast cobble three people <laughs> together and do the same exercise and we can like pit the teams oh. against each other. I don't want to do that. <laughs> the Super Bowl discrepancy too much for me. How how about Jacksonville? Let's get the Jaguars. Jacksonville, podcast. who would be the three quarterbacks drafted? Mark Brunel, Trevor Lethwich. Lawrence. Byron Trevor Lawrence, David Garrett, David Garrett, David, no, David Gar no, exactly. No, I think we each named one. <laughs> what about the Panthers? Who who would be the three? So Cam Newton, Jake DeLome, Kerry Collins. Boy, anybody else? Hmm. Boy, Kerry Collins is such a Young, Houston but... Texans. Houston Deshaun Texans. Watson, David Carr, and Matt Schaub. Matt Schaub. Matt Schaub. Matt Schaub. You know, David Carr, good though, wolf, man. David yeah, Mills, again, I think you David got, I, I think in Carolina and Houston, you got two. <laughs> what about the Bears? Who are the three quarterbacks in, in the Sid Luckman, Jim McMahon, Jay Cutler, and Jay Cutler? Yeah, <laughs> Jim McMahon, just along for Jimmy the Harbaugh <laughs> and Jim Harbaugh, just getting berated, just by wearing him. khakis <laughs> on the field, calling <laughs> audibles, Ditka melting down with a perfectly creased line right down the middle of those khakis. All right, Daily Vikings Entertainment here. We're excited later this week for Netflix to release the quarterback docuseries too, so we'll check that out. See you guys.